All right, I'm sick of this damn castle. We've beaten Margit, worked our way through flocks of fire-breathing birds, been robbed by a tall jackass, and seen a giant face. There's just one thing left to do. We gotta kill Godric the Grafted. I'm Jamie Latour, and this guide is all about taking down Godric and his many, many arms. Seriously, check this guy out. I bet this guy lifts. Okay, actually, there is one thing that I haven't mentioned in any of the previous videos. If you go from the Lifside Chamber site of Grace past those fire-breathing birds again, you'll see this room, and inside will be this cool warrior lady who just murdered this knight. This is Nefeli Lu, warrior princess. She'll offer up her help in taking down Godric, and after you speak with her, her summon side will be right outside the boss arena. You can choose to bring her along with you into this fight, although she won't do much better than Roger did against Margit. She does have a quest line in the game that you can complete, although I'm not 100% sure if you have to summon her to continue it. But I summoned her anyway because it's nice to have a friend along when you're facing a demigod. Now on to the fight with that ugly grafted man himself. Godric's main attacks come from his massive golden axe. He'll swing it around, jump in the air, and try to smash you with it. He's got this silly rolling attack, which, come on guy, I'm the one who rolls around here. He'll also bring his axe down and cause the ground to crumble beneath his might, but then it just sort of resets back to normal. Another thing he'll do is this wind attack. He'll create a cyclone around himself and then fire these bursts of air at you. Needless to say, when he's making wind or crumbling the ground, keep your distance because those moves will hurt. His rolling attack also leaves him wide open when he's finished, so dodge roll through it and then wail on him when he's done. When you've gotten his health bar down to about halfway, that's when he enters into his second phase, which features a delightfully silly cutscene. He chops off his hand and then kind of shoves the stump into a dragon and then that attaches a dragon head to the stump which now lets him use the dragon head as a hand that shoots fire. That's stupid, but also awesome, so I'll allow it. So yeah, now he's got a dragon head arm, and from this point forward, he's all about that fire. He's got a bunch of fire attacks, like this spew of fire, this wave of fire that's pretty easy to dodge through, some fire balls, and his wind attacks now come with bonus fire. It's a regular fire sail over here. Like Margit, Godric will have some odd delays when it comes to his attack animations, so don't roll too early, or you'll be taking some damage. You could also get some good hits on him just before he enters his second phase, as he spends a few seconds screaming like a moron and not moving. Also like Margit, he's very weak to hemorrhage, so there's some solid potential for you to inflict some serious bleed damage on him. Poison is also very effective, so if you have like poison arrows or the poison mist incantation, that'll get some nice damage as well. Scarlet Rot also works if you've somehow gotten your hands on something that deals rot damage at this point. For melee attackers, you just need to Time your dodges right, watch out for his big AoE attacks, and capitalize on the moments where he's not moving. Ranged attackers might actually have an easier time on this boss battle, as it's not hard to create distance between Godric and yourself. If you are having trouble, summon in the Feli or a Spirit to give Godric someone to focus on while you blast him from afar. Soon enough, you should have Godric beat, and you'll get your first great rune and the remembrance of the Grafted. But we're not done yet. Head to the round table hold and talk to the NPCs because some of them will have some new dialogue regarding your recent victory. Then you'll find the Feli over here and you can talk to her to get the Arsenal Charm, which increases your equip load. Considering that this pumpkin helmet weighs a ton, you're damn right I put that on. Now remember that room that was always closed off to you here? Well, now that you have a great rune, it's wide open and there are some weird ass giant fingers inside. There's also a creepy finger maiden in here who will dump a a whole lot of exposition on you. Keep talking to her and you'll eventually get the option to turn the Remembrance of the Grafted into either the Axe of Godric or the Grafted Dragon. Once you've done everything you need to do in the round table, head back over to the Limgrave Tower Bridge site of Grace, which is through that building with the statues near that lion mini-boss on the Stormville front path. 
you'll now be able to go towards that big tower in the distance. On this bridge, there will be three giant golems. They can take a while to fight, but they're pretty slow and dumb, so you can really just run right by them. At the end of the bridge, there will be this portal that you should take, and you'll be in front of this big old door. Open it, ride the elevator up, and then go past this side of Grace, go up these stairs, and you'll be able to activate Godric's Great Rune by these dead fingers. Or maybe they're sleeping. I don't, I don't know how the physiology of these fingers works. You'll now be able to equip a Great Rune when you rest at a site of Grace, and you can put this one on, and it may be one of the best runes in the game, because even though you'll get a whole bunch of these, this one boosts all your stats by five when you consume a rune arc. So basically, you're just getting a bunch of free levels. I'll take it. It's finally time to move on from Stormvale Castle. Warp back to the Godric the Grafted site of Grace, and you'll see Gatekeeper Ghostock just stomping the crap out of Godric's corpse. And look, look how tiny Godric is without all of his arms. He's just a teeny tiny little man. Go into Godric's throne room, head over to the left, fall down over here, and you'll find an item called a Shabiri Grape, which is actually a yellowing eyeball pretty gross. Then come out here and you'll be at the Lyurnia of the Lake site of Grace where a blind woman named Hyetta will be. Coincidentally, she'll ask you for a Shabiri grape and you can feed it to her. So yes, this is a game where you can feed blind ladies eyeballs. I love this game. And with that, that's a wrap on Stormvale. It's time to move on to the other zones of Elden Ring like Lyurnia or the Atlas Plateau or Kaelid. <sighs> Kaelid. For more Elden Ring news and guides, head on over to thegamer.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time for presumably something also very difficult and terrifying and gross. Hurrah!